LLB is worth it. I say it without any fear of contradiction. LLB is worth it. I'm happy to be an LLB holder. I'm enjoying myself as an LLB holder. I'm even enjoying practicing as an advocate. I reap from what I saw. Uh, hello, hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Gift Varsity TV. Uh, this is your host, Gift Bozekana. I say, if, if you're you are... subscriber to this channel, welcome back if you are new to this channel please don't miss this uh, caring and loving family that we have here bringing professionals gift varsity tv make sure you subscribe you hit that notification bell so that next time when we upload great videos you will be the first person to be notified uh, today i have a honor to have uh, our professional here uh, hello sir can you introduce yourself Thank you very much, my brother Gift. Uh, greetings to all the listeners and viewers at home. It's it, at KM Njana, an admitted advocate of the High Court of South Africa, the founder and chairperson of the Fearless Azanian Lawyers Association, FALA, and the founder and director of Advocate Khoto Njana Foundation. I'm so blessed to be here with you, my brother. Okay. Wow, thank you, thank you. Eh? I'm with a big advocate. <laughs> so, uh, advocate, can we get to know more? Like, where are you from? Like, tell us about your your background. Advocate Khoto Nchana is from a village in Limpopo called Sesaupe. It's a very small village uh, where there are not many professionals. I must say. By the way, I'm the first admitted advocate from that village. That's how uh, uh, underdeveloped uh, 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 it is. So, I grew up in a very, you know, less privileged background, in a family where we are not rich. I'm not from a well-to-do family. But I grew up in, in a family where they value education, although we were not rich. For example, my mom went to school uh when she was in her late 40s so that's how they value education i grew up in that family where we, where we had our own struggles uh, and i didn't let that disadvantages get into my way or preclude me from achieving my goals or being where i am today I then left that, you know, I, I attended different schools. My, my, my journey was that long. I attended two primary schools, two high schools. Uh, the first was Dinogo Primary School. I think I did my grade one to grade three. I left to Mamilodi where I was living in a squatter camp. There was no electricity and I was staying in a shack. I did my grade three up to grade nine. A grade 3 to 7 I did it in Mohal I think Mohal Primary School and my high school was uh, Hatta and Comprehensive School in Mamilodi then my family took me back to, to Limpopo because you know they were under the impression that the lifestyle in, in Mamilodi of the youth will end up you know ruining the good morals that i have or the family values so they took me back to the villages and yeah i think they did a very good thing because most of our youth are being diminished by drugs and alcohol and stuff especially those in the cities yeah so i went back to the village i did my grade 10 11 and 12 and you know in all this journey I, I was always that student to get high marks uh, I was <laughs> yeah then I, I matriculated uh, with three distinctions and the other subject I, I was just two marks away from getting a distinction yeah, yeah then I proceeded to varsity University of Limpopo where I got married Bazari in my first year of doing law and you know when you arrive in varsity it's a whole new world it's a whole uh, new experience 
you get to meet a lot of people from different backgrounds, from different uh, communities, from different families. Uh, you meet different characters. And in that process, you end up trying to accommodate those people from various uh, uh, backgrounds. Somewhere, somehow, it affects even your studies because you make friends, and you know, friends being in varsity, you get to meet a lot of friends. Yeah, I was not uh, an exception to that because I, I met friends, although I was not a, a parting person, I, I'm, I'm, I was that reserved somebody, but I made a lot of friends and I had fun during my varsity time. First year, my marks were not that bad, but I couldn't uh, maintain my merit buzzer because they wanted an average of 70, I think, yeah, 70, uh, 75, average of 75 for you to get uh, that merit buzzer again. So my second year, I didn't have a buzzer, I struggled to register and I even made a loan, a student loan, so that I register and proceed with my studies. Then third year and fourth year, I managed to get another buzzer that came to my rescue. And I, you know, things started being very tough during my second year because I did not have any other buzzer. I started failing. That's the first time in my life I experienced this thing called failure. It was, it was my first. Okay, failure. before, before, all right, we go that to the, to, uh, yeah. So now, um, you say that you were uh, that good student, right? Uh, from, from, from high school. Indeed, yes. I was brilliant. Yes. <laughs> so you you wanted to do law. Okay, I, did you study law or LLP? Because sometimes I like, like LLP or oh, LLP yeah. at University of Limpopo. Yeah, Bacalarius Legum. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, all right. So, is there any other thing that you wanted to study? or you wanted to become a lawyer, an advocate only? No, my brother, there, there was never any other thing that I wanted to do except for this law thing. I'm a, I'm a people's person. I want to engage. I want to articulate. I want to engage the masses. That's who I am and who I stand for. Uh, from an early age, I've, I've been that vocal child, that child who always want to be engaging with the people even at high school and primary level i was always that student if we have group discussion i always volunteered to be the one who present you understand and i was also involved in poetry during my early days and won awards several medals you understand so law according to me it's, it's something that i always loved and it's in alignment with my personality Yes. Okay. 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 So I never had that challenge of saying no. I want to do something other than law. You understand? So law has always been that thing that I wanted to do, and that is why, even today, I'm still enjoying being in this profession, and I want to grow in this profession. Doing what you love. Doing what I love. Okay. The secret is doing what you love because if you do what you love, you stand to excel. I like doing something that you are you are in need maybe because of money. We we know we all want to to have money, but that shouldn't be the main thing. You must love what you do. If you love what you do, you excel in it. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, let's go back to Varsity now. Ne? you applied to University of Limpopo. The challenges was with financial challenges, and now you started failing. Yeah, let's continue from that stuff. The, the, the challenge is, is that, you know, uh, coming from a, an underprivileged background, it's, it's a challenge on its own. Coming from a, a poverty-stricken background, it's a challenge and a serious one because there you meet kids from well-to-do families and some they do come to, to, to varsity with their own cars and, and they have their own lap laptops. I must tell you that I owned a laptop in my final year, fourth year, in my, in my, in my final year of, of LLB. That's when I, I got my first laptop and it was just uh, from my sister. That's the laptop that was uh, uh, being utilized by my sister. That's how hard things were. 
I was using this. You, you see, there is a lab room in each and every teacher institution. I used to type my things there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have means to own the laptop, a simple laptop. As compared to other kids who are from well-to-do families, they come to varsity having their own laptops. They start owning laptops from primary. Mm -hmm. So it was it was tough like that, and you know, but I I I'm a, I believe that I'm a brilliant student, I, and I've always believed that I am a brilliant person. I never let anything. People who came across me, they'll tell you that guy is very confident. He knows uh, uh, his worth, or he understands and values him himself. Such that I want people to grasp that no matter the circumstances or no matter. Uh, how harsh the conditions you find yourself in never let those things define you you can be whatever or whoever you want to be in this life wow, wow that, that's great that's great that's refreshing indeed okay all right so yeah you mentioned that you it was the first time failing in some in university yeah how in did you year. in your second year yeah so how did you make sure that you you don't fail again <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, I will go back to the issue of family I come from a family that values education it, it was it was uh, a family that encourages one to study if you tell them that you failed they will tell you no you are not serious you must go past that uh, uh, module you, you, you have passed your, 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 your primary and, and uh, second there's nothing special about university just work hard study you'll pass um, i come from that kind of a family where they will always encourage you to do more and do your best okay. yeah so i i, I gain strength uh, that way and uh, courage to go and try again and by hard work and the grace of god i i, I passed my my second year okay yeah. You passed your second year, you went to but third But I year. repeated some of the modules in, in second year, but I, I managed to pass them. And <laughs> amazing enough, I, 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 I passed or graduated on record time. Although there were some years, I, 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 I you know, there were some modules that I used to carry. Do, for instance, in my third year, I was doing some modules from second year. In my fourth year i was doing some modules from third year and fourth year but i managed to pass them on record time i i didn't repeat uh, or do my llb in five years i did it four years Get in record time yeah uh, at university of Limpom. so tell us about your journey now until you be, you become an advocate until uh, as you are now okay I'll do it. yeah so yeah i i graduated uh from university of limpopo on record time and then there comes uh the reality the real world out there from varsity you know when you are still at varsity some of the things you are not uh, conversant with them because as a student you are not told how harsh the world out there can be and how cruel or brutal the world can be out there you graduate and you don't have funds to even go to law school you have to wait and try to find some domestic uh, jobs so that you can fund your law school I found myself in that position because I didn't have money for law school I used to do these odd jobs you know sometimes being a parking assistant you see these jobs that you know most these guys we find on the street we call them nyope boys those guys they help us pack our cars i used to do that kind of a job so that is why today when i meet them i always give them money <laughs> because i know what they are going through some of them are having uh, the qualifications they just don't have people to, to, to assist them further their uh, studies or even proceed with those qualifications. So I found myself in such a predicament. Uh, but with the grace of God, I ended up uh, getting my breakthrough to the fraternity. I started uh, with uh, 
saving articles. Mm -hmm. I served articles under Mahodi. He was a magistrate, an acting magistrate. I was lucky to be under his leadership because uh, that man was uh, a prominent uh, legal practitioner at that time. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in that position. He assisted me, he taught me a lot of things. And that's him who taught me, you know what, I think you are a litigator by nature. How about you switch to the advocacy route? You, you can be a very good litigator because from what I see from you, you love going to court and love arguing. The attorney route can be somehow not in alignment with your personality. And that's when I considered uh, the advocacy route. It was not easy, but... I pushed and I ended up being an advocate okay. and with the grace of God and the hard work that I used to put, it, it was not easy. Uh, you know when after receiving admission as an advocate, one of the difficult things is that who's going to brief you as a counsel because you are not known, you are not established and you know people, some, some attorneys they prefer, let me just say more attorneys prefer those councils who have been doing the work for quite some time. Okay. So as a junior council, you start there, you don't have any briefs. But with hard work, one brief you get, you do your best, they give you another brief. Okay. Then that's how you get to be known. And, and also, another thing that helped me a lot, I think it's being a community developer. I'm a community developer, like I'm saying, I have a foundation that assists the communities. I used to be in local radio stations giving out legal information for Blueback FM, for Mama 2 FM in Northwest, for until I went to Lisedi, Lisedi is a national uh, radio, I used to give advices there. Mm. As the likes of SKFM, they know me, I used to give free legal advice there. So that helped me to also gain exposure and, and, and yeah, right. people get to know me. Yeah, and also I assist a lot of practitioners to get, you know, these candidate practitioners and, 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 and these pupils. I assist them to get admissions. Even today I was moving this other application in Pretoria High Court. That guy was admitted as an advocate. I moved a lot of application in my, in my, journey, in my journey as, a, as, a, as an advocate. I assisted a lot of people, black and white, to be admitted as attorneys and as advocates. Okay, so uh, a, a student is watching us, an LLP student, even a, a, a grade 12 who now wants to do LLP. So they want to know, like, what steps do they take until they become an advocate? What, uh, what are the things that they should have? When you want to be an advocate, the procedure is that you apply, to, you apply for privilege. After LLP? After LLP. Yes. And... Pupilage will take a period of one year and you'll have a mentor and you'll also have to write bar exams. If you pass your bar exams, you have a, 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 an opportunity to apply to the High Court to say, I've uh, met the requirements. I did my pupilage, I, I wrote my bar exams, I have my LLB, can you now admit me as an advocate? Then if you want to be an attorney, the procedure is that after your completion of after completion of your LLB, you go to law school for a period of four months. It used to be six months, but now it's four months. You go to law school for four months, you get your PLT, Practical Legal Training Certificate. And then you write board exams. After writing board exams, you can serve uh, for a period of one year or two years of your articles then after that period you can apply to the high court and say I want to be admitted as an attorney yes. okay. Okay. that's great okay. that is the difference between a candidate a candidate attorney and a pupil those are the procedures that one needs to follow if you want to do uh, advocacy you do pupilage for one year you write by exams and, and, and you get your admission if you want to be an attorney, you go to law school, you write your board exams, and you serve your articles, then you get your admission. All right, all right. 
so all, all right okay thank you thank you indeed uh, let's hope you are clear guys uh, those who are doing llb currently mm -hmm. so now you said that uh, the person that you was helping you to become an advocate said that you must branch to this advocate route ne? no that, that one was the not it was oh. before i i, I oh. decided to go to the okay. <laughs> so my question is what are the opportunities that someone like the many roads can they branch to with routes. with if llb you, with llb there are many routes i mean we have uh npa that appoint prosecutors you can be a prosecutor with your llb you can be a chief a, a, a clerk you can be uh a, a, a secretary in the banks you know this legal secretaries in in various banks they do appoint uh, legal secretaries you can with your LLB, I think you can do a lot of things, more especially with regard to the law. Each and every company needs someone with expertise, with, with the legal knowledge to assist them as far as their legal department uh, requires. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Uh, so, is a uh, be, uh, is that an LLB worth it? LLB is worth it. I say it without any fear of contradiction. LLB is worth it. I'm happy to be an LLB holder. I'm enjoying myself as an LLB holder. I'm even enjoying practicing as an advocate. I reap from what I saw. So uh, you can live this life that many students are planning to live because, yeah. You know. <laughs> I think people we, 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 we go for LLB for different reasons. Yeah. Hence I told you when we, are, we were starting, we we're beginning with our interview that I, I am in this profession because I, I love transforming lives. Yeah. It's within me. Hence I have this foundation and I have this organization called the Fearless Ascendant Lawyers Association. Yeah. I want to transform the legal fraternity. I believe within the legal fraternity, if you know it very well, Previously, it was white-dominated uh, uh, fraternity. So we want to challenge and change the status quo and have more black faces who are competent, who, who are going to be excelling in their various fields of, of, of practice. So we want to have uh, 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 more black practitioners who are doing very well. We are not saying white shouldn't come to the profession. They are already in the profession. They are doing well also. So we are saying we need to bridge that gap. Previously it was said female uh, uh, black practitioners are not uh, uh, competent. For example, we have uh, 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 that case of Senzo Meiwa, where we have one of the black female practitioners who are doing very well, Advocate Mshololo. I was with him, I was with her today. <laughs> so we want to challenge the status quo and bring equality and justice within the legal fraternity because it, it's that the for the government to operate fully and 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 with with fairness there must be a, a, a regime that has proper administration of justice okay. so that is why i chose law and i i, I don't regret I, I i love llb i love law i love practicing yeah. this you don't regret. I don't regret. Yeah, that's great indeed. There were times when, 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 I must say it, you know, when, when you go for articles, the man is not that good. And the magazine light to you, only few firms do afford a candidate a lot of money. They will give you money just to allow you to go to work and go back home and also pay your rent. So at that point, you'll have many thought oh, was it worth it doing this llb i'm now struggling there are many llb students or not students llb graduates were struggling at this particular point in time because of uh, such things and i want to say to them they must just hold on uh, they will reach canaan soon <laughs> yeah, all right. so it, it, it's not an easy journey especially if you want to consider financial stability a person who did teaching will have financial stability uh, quicker than the person who <laughs> who did LLB. But in the long run, yeah. an LLB student will will come up on top. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? So you have to understand your journey, be familiar with your journey, love your journey, love what you do, 
put more effort, excel, improve your skills, you'll go far. You'll even enjoy the fraternity. Okay. You'll reap and enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. You'll reap and enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you, oh, advocate. So what is that? what are the things that you, like you have explained other things that uh, uh, LLP graduates should know? Like what are the other things that you think that they should know that to me are higher? One thing they should familiarize themselves with is, is practice. Practice is way di practice is way different. It's way different to uh, theories that you learn in, in in varsity. You get to learn the practical side of of, of this field. You go to court. You have uh, uh, you'll be in that whole new environment where you have to face the magistrate, the judge, uh, and and if you are doing a criminal matter, you'll face also the prosecutor. And if it's a civil, you'll be facing your fellow counsels. And if you're not familiar with practice, they will leave you uh, messed up. After that uh, hearing, you'll even think, no, maybe this thing is not for me. It's tough litigating. It's tough out there when, when, when you, 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 you do your court appearances. You, you get to, to learn a lot of things, even about the emotional intelligence. You have to learn to master your emotions because if you get your emotions to master you will have a problem in this fraternity this is one of the this is one of the things that i think people must know in law we it's not court of emotions it's court of justice so we follow the law not emotions oh, okay. yeah all right we follow the law uh, not emotions. Not emotions. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Within this law, what are the different kinds of law like people can follow? There, there are various uh, fields uh, that one can follow. Where, when we have LLB, LLB, I call it, it's, it's, it's a general uh, degree. degree. Because with LLB, you can decide, like, I want to specialize with labor law. I want to specialize with criminal law. If you are not scared of criminals, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, what, what are the disadvantages <laughs> of criminal law? Uh, you know, criminal law, uh, you must learn not to judge. When you do criminal law, you must not judge this person when they say, no, he committed murder. Uh, he Remember, you are not guilty until your guilt has been proven by the trial court. So, and you know, you deal with different people when you deal with criminal law. You know, these people who are accused, some of them, they have this character that is intimidating <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. you have to develop that thick skin and be bold and, 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 and yeah, do your job. So it's not easy, and, and, and when you are practicing criminal law, sometimes you get threats from, from some of the clients that you assisted. <laughs> you, you, you understand? And Let's say, for example, uh, you are appointed to, to do bail application, and it happened that that bail application get refused. Mm. By the way, it's not guaranteed that it will be granted. Mm. They refuse that bail application, and that person won't even understand why bail was refused, you understand? And let's say it's someone who's accused of uh, robbery and murder and that person starts threatening you. You see, you, you have to be very bold and, and uh, understand that this is my work and I'm not going to be intimidated no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the one who decides. It is the magistrate and the judge who decide. Oh. I do my best. I represent clients. Okay. Some will even get convictions. They will say, no, we're sentencing your client to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to 15 years. What will you say? You did your best, but at the end of the day, the, the court decided to sentence that person. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So yeah. you can decide to go commercial and can do the likes of tax law. You can do business law. There are a lot of fields in this uh, fraternity. You can decide to do family law if you want to be the one dealing with these divorces, maintenance, yes. Okay. So there are many fields. And also it's not LLB only if you want to, you have interest in the law. You can do BCOM law. You okay. see, it's also relevant. Oh, all right, yeah. all right, all right. 
<laughs> okay, indeed. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you win cases, sometimes you lose them. You know, how do you feel when you lose a case? <laughs> Unfortunately, I win most of my case. Fortunately, yeah. I must yeah. say, if unfortunately, fortunately, I win uh, most of my cases. If I don't win, that's when I settled. Okay. Uh, that means it's not a lose per se. It's just that we met each other halfway. I, I, most of the time, I win my cases. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, so I don't know whether you will share a strategy or what is it that um, makes you win these cases. No, my brother. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. It's just simple as that. You have to prepare. You cannot be having a matter tomorrow and we see you at pubs there uh, doing these funny things. You understand? Yeah. Groovy. You have to allocate time to your work. And allocate your, 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 your working time according to a cognitive level of understanding so that you always have a, a proper understanding of what your matter is all about and how are you going to address it to the court okay yes. all right all right Th okay thanks you, so must, you must always prepare there's nothing that is miraculous you must just prepare read your books you see these books they're big mm -hmm. you have to read these books and research okay. and you'll do your best you'll win okay. even if they, you don't get an order granted you'll lose in style <laughs> <laughs> okay okay before before we close you, uh, initially when you were introducing yourself you talk you, you mentioned some foundations that you started and what is the, the all about let me start by advocate uh Honto in China foundation mm. uh like i said i already alluded when we began with our uh interview I told you that I'm from uh, an underprivileged background and also that community or that village that I'm from, it's not a, a well-developed uh, uh, community. For example, when I was still attending my grade one and two, there were some students who used to attend under three, you understand? So there are some students who are not having uh, shoes and you, you understand, some don't even have proper a, a school uniform so those things when when you get to some uh, level i mustn't say i've uh, reached the level that i want to see myself in um, I, I still leave some room for improvement okay. but i decided that i want to contribute to the betterment of my community and not just my community but our country as a whole how many students out there are struggling with school uniforms uh, toiletries, things like that. Okay. So, I decided to form an organization, a foundation to assist those people who are not uh, from well-to-do families so that they also attend their studies without any uh, prejudice. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right, all right. So, it's all about plowing back or giving back to, to, to my communities. Remember, it takes a village to raise a child. So I believe I belong to the village and I belong to the people of South Africa. My life is only important if I, I serve people. The more I serve people, my life is worth living okay. because that's what I, I stand for. All right, yes. all right, all right, all right, okay. It's Azamian Association. Yeah. We can't leave this okay. one. <laughs> no, this one is the main one, okay. All right, so, okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I decided to form this organization because of many reasons. Like I said, the the fraternity, the history of legal fraternity, it has been dominated by white people. And no matter how, 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 how many we are as blacks, we're still not dominating the fraternity because we are not united. Uh, look how many law firms are there there is no black law black owned firm that is on top 10 in south africa and we are many black people in south africa we know that for a fact so this organization purpose is to unite black practitioners 
and not to exclude white practitioners. Those who want to be part of our organization, they are welcome to do so. But this is to help practitioners to unite so that they build very powerful law firms, also advocates, they unite so that they share knowledge. And also, we want to transform the fraternity by fighting the injustices that are there in our communities. We are also going to render some pro bono services to our community members who are indigent, who, who can't afford to pay lawyers. We are going to be assisting them for free. There are some of the things that we are going to be uh, like community awareness programs. We are going to be running those kind of uh, programs. And also, when the organization grows, we want to have a, a, a health side of, of, of the organization. Let's say have some health professionals that will deal with legal practitioners who are going through depression. I think this fraternity, a lot of people, some are going through a lot and no one is there to, to afford them a, 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 a listening ear. So we want to be there for legal practitioners. Even when they are accused of things that they have been done, we, we will stand for them, we will fight for them. Indeed, it's going to be a successful. Any two last words before we close to any students outside there, you know, who, in, which you, which you, in which you want them to? I, I want to leave them with the words of uh, Albert Einstein. He once said, education is not just the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Use that education to transform your communities. Use that education to transform your country. Be a role player. Don't be a bystander. Go out there and change lives. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, indeed, uh, Advocate Njana. Uh, we really appreciate your time in this channel. Uh, uh, we are really honored to have you uh, in this channel. And you are the first advocate to be in this channel. <laughs> and, uh, and we really, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. Thank you very much. I love making history. <laughs> so it's a history. <laughs> it's a, in, the, in the history of this channel, to all of coming advocates, this is the first advocate to be on this channel. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't undermine uh, uh, anyone's initiative. You, you, have, you came with a very proper initiative and a great idea that you create this channel for, for students to be inspired. So why should we undermine that program or channel? It's very important and I wish it to grow so that you have a very big TV and it will get to that point. Just put more effort and I appreciate what you are doing.